Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Trainers Warehouse Show and Share. I have with me today Izzy Gazelle. Izzy, you want to say hello? Hi. Hi. Dad. Nice to nice to be with everyone. We're happy to have you here. Um, Izzy uh, has been working with Trainers Warehouse with me and my dad, who started our company. For uh, we figured it's probably close to thirty years. Um, <laughs> a long time for both of us, but we both look so young, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, his book, Playing Along, has been in print for 26 years. He's a certified speaking professional and um, has was probably the first to start using improv in workplaces for growth, for team building, for stress relief, and all kinds of stuff. So um, Izzy, I'm going to leave it to you to, as you're talking about your product, to give us a little bit more color uh, into your experience. And um, and we'll start with that. So right. please tell us about Playing Along. Well, uh, Playing Along came about, um, so my background, of the, the quick um, uh, timeline. I started out as a special education teacher in New York City, uh, but I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian, which, by the way, is not that different than being a special education teacher or any teacher. <laughs> and when I was teaching in the graduate school uh, at Hunter College uh, in, in the education department, while I was studying stand-up, what I realized was that teaching and performing uh, and stand-up are very similar in that both are, are situations where an individual is on a stage, a platform, trying to hold the attention of a multiple levels of interest from a group that may or may not be that interested in being there. Later on, when I got into training and facilitating, I saw that's exactly what we do. What we do, essentially, if, if you boil down to the, the universal of our um, profession and our skill set, part of it is energy management. When you design your program, it's about the flow of energy. It's, uh, it, it's about keeping different levels of interest um, focused about our own energy. Uh, so what I began to realize, so I, I, I left teaching, went into stand-up comedy, um, got to be a middle act. This is in the, the mid nineties and uh, became a motivational humorist after teaching comedy writing at UMass Amherst and met business people who wanted to learn about humor in the workplace. So how so is I, he, did this lead then to playing along? Yeah. So what happened product. was, it was, I was doing keynotes and people wanted longer workshops. I needed activities. I was in an improv group and I realized that that's where my stress was. And I brought those activities into the the, the workshops and playing along was a book that I uh, created about using improv games for um, engagement and getting people involved. What I realized once I learned how to facilitate was that the key in the activities, in any activity, is the debrief. What questions do you ask? So the cards, as well as the book, essentially, if you the, the cards are I give a little background to what is now known as applied improv, the application of improv theater principles to real life situations. And the games themselves, for some reason, allow people to lose their defenses and be real about their behavior. The way you play is the way you are in situations of similar emotional content. So if you're competitive, you'll be competitive no matter whether you need to be or not. It's just in your nature. Once you recognize that you're sometimes competitive when it's not helpful to you, you may then have the observation to ch start changing your, your behavior. So the key to the games is to recognize that, first of all, they lower the status. So you're since you don't know how it's going to turn out, you're as vulnerable as you're asking your participants to be, which is one way to build psychological safety. Hmm. Um, the, the other idea is that it doesn't matter what happens. Whatever happens is, is a, a spark to, to a question. What happened? Why did you volunteer? Why did you not volunteer? What did the rest of you notice when somebody did volunteer? How is the experience that you had different from what you expected? How does this and, and the, you know, how does this relate to what's going on with your team, your relationship, your person? That's the essence of, of what applied improv is. And that's awesome. what these games are about. 
All right, before we keep going, any questions? No? Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> what we thought was that, that Susan and I would play a game and show you show how it works. So <laughs> in the deck, um, I go through the, the deck. And, and the key is, the reason I, I put this deck together after the book was that the book is kind of clunky or uh, this is you can carry it in your bag and in, in, in your pocket. You always have a resource for new games. The real key is to play the games before you need them. Play with your friends, your family. You have to become uncomfortable. You have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable about the outcome. This is unlike so many other activities where we direct the team towards a known outcome. Okay, and so just to be clear, I haven't practiced this, so I am going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> just well, that, putting that out there. <laughs> that's exactly it. And one of the things I would suggest to you is that most of the people we work with, including ourselves, mix up the concepts of safety zone and comfort zone. So they say, I don't want to volunteer because I don't feel safe, but actually they feel uncomfortable. And if we, you, can, you can show that in these activities where the discomfort is where we grow. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through these decks. And, and the, the game that I usually start with is called um, One Word Story. It's in here. And uh, the idea is, and the instructions are written out so that anybody can play them. And what we're going to do, Susan, this, this is you and I are going to tell a story that's never been told before. Okay. And um, should we include more people or do we, we just start with the two of we us? Could, we could include more people. This is, this is a, a good game for up to four, five, six, six people at a time. Okay. So do any of our other participants want to? Oh, I see a thumbs up from Annette. <laughs> <laughs> okay let me get to see everybody um okay uh annette thanks for the thumbs up and angela let me ask you this so here's an opportunity let me ask you annette what kept you what what did you say to yourself that kept that made your hand go up what 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 what, what impelled you to volunteer well can you hear me okay yes okay good um, what kept I, I'm usually the one doing what you're doing. Okay. So I like to experience it from the other side. Great. Great. Um, and let me ask somebody who did not volunteer or raise their hand. What kept your hand from going up? This is not about right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. This is about observation of behavior of the people in our groups. So would somebody um, uh, be willing to just say, why did you decide not to raise your hand? Anyone? Give us an answer, please. I'm I'm guessing it's that same kind of discomfort that you were talking about of not wanting to put yourself on the line and open yourself up. Like it's it's possible, it's scary, right? You know, uh, there, there, there's this, exactly. And then the next question I would ask is to the audience. How did you feel when you saw that somebody had volunteered? And what I tell you, what do you think the answer is, Annette? Relieved. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I use this. No, we haven't even played the game yet. And what I do with this particular facilitation is I will now point out that Annette's action for her own reasons had the power to change the emotional climate for other people in the room. So if you're doing leadership, if you're doing team building, if you're doing self-awareness, this is a way to get people to tap into their self-talk with total safety. They don't have to participate, yet they are engaged because they have an emotion. So um, we have four of us. We'll play the game one word at a time. The idea is we're each going to add a word to a story. Um, we can allow each other to use the words period, question mark, exclamation point to indicate the end of a sentence. However, that can't take the place of our turn. So we can't abdicate adding a story. Uh, you're never going to know how it's going to turn out. Uh, all, all you really can do is control your word. Let's. I'll make up a title of a story and uh, we'll go Susan, Angela, Annette, myself. Susan, Angela, Annette, myself. And let's tell the story of the magic water bottle. Susan, begin. One word, any word. Once. 
upon Angela? Time. Was, uh, uh, was it Angela? Yes. Once upon a time. Time. One word. Take one word. A. Time. A. A. Hers would be <laughs> A. Mine would be time. Once upon a time. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I, I had, you, it took Annette. me a little while to get it. <laughs> All right. Let's stop. Let's let's facilitate. When teams are brought together, very often they're expected to hit the ground running. What you can point out now, sometimes teams need a little bit of practice, warm up like a dance to get into rhythm with, because we all have different rhythms. So what happens in the game is always a, an opportunity to pause, point out what happened, make it relevant. Um, Cedric's playing. So uh, let's start over. Let's play the story of, of um, what's, in the, uh, what's in the envelope. Um, and uh, so Susan, begin. There. Was, Angela? A. Annette? Magic. Cedric? Ball. You said Susan? vowel? Ball. 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 It. Bounced. Back. To. Me. <laughs> so. I. Can. Painful. What was that? Can. I said can. C A N. Do. It. <laughs> Everywhere. Period. I. Will. Try. Harder to send you a ball. <laughs> Period. This is harder. This is harder it than is, I thought. It is magic. Envelopes exciting exciting or oh, excite. I, okay, well, I'm going to change that to art is exciting to. I forgot what to start what we started with. Uh, <laughs> Can we repeat? <laughs> yeah, please. Magic envelopes are exciting to. Oh, magic envelopes are exciting to play with. Period. The end. Let's pause. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. So remember, this is all about the process. So, so the, the question, the general question is to to the group is, what was that like for you? It was challenging, but what I found, it really forced me to focus and to listen to what people said before so I can make some sort of sense to it to keep in order to keep the flow going and encourage others to come come on board. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. You the, 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 w w one, of, one of the things that Applied Improv does is it forces you to stay focused and in the present but also to be aware of the goal. So you, you, you demonstrated that very, very well. And again, notice we're just talking about the, what happened in the game. I also feel like when you, you're thinking when you say a word, not just of what came before, but of wanting to kind of set up what may be next. And so you, you might have in your head an idea of what that next word is. Mm -hmm. But then your your colleague chooses a you know they don't know what's in your head they pick a completely different word and I just think that that's a really interesting dynamic that you can probably also do a lot with when you're facilitating. Yeah, definitely. So so Susan, what you're saying you're pointing out that even with the best of intention, I want to help my partner. If you you cannot control what they see, feel, hear, or do, 
So your only responsibility is to say a word. You have to let go of either helping, hindering, or driving your own agenda. You have to be essentially uh, neutral. Your responsibility is the word. Once you say the word, it's, it's not it. So very often, well, I try to help them. And again, if you do leadership or teams or organization development, psychological safety, um, um, uh, DEI. So that feels actually really different, though, from being in a team. And maybe this is part of the conversation, because I feel like in a team, it's not just, you know, what you do when you leave it. You know, it's 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 sort of hard it's hard to let go. Um, maybe that's me because I'm a control freak. Ask my <laughs> okay. colleagues. <laughs> there, there you go. The way you play is the way you are. So what you this just what what you said. Going back to the team or the group, the the the, the trait that comes out pretty often there is um, people not having patience with other people struggling or or having a different pacing. So they jump in. I want to help. Did they ask for help? No. But I want to help. I saw them struggling. Were you struggling? No, I was thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, introvert, extrovert. This is this is a, a a very very rich area to point out how we have different intentions, even though we have the same goal. Angela, I think, I think to actually, as I think we sort and uh, figured that out. We North Americans are very uncomfortable with dead space. So you're right, we want to jump in and support a person when really and truly, we're not giving that person time to think. And everybody thinks differently and different space and we're jumping in to fill that space. And that's something that I need to be aware of. And this is something that uh, when I do leadership program, one of the the traits of the difficulties with being a leader is knowing when to to push and when to to let go and, 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 Again, notice the depth of the conversation for a game that has no real world negative consequences. Yeah. And has no right or wrong. Yeah. Um, so we call that that pause that uh, Angela's talking about in, in sales, we call it a, a pregnant pause. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and people, we teach sales reps how to just sit back when a customer is thinking. Um, and not jump in because she's right that we want to jump in um, and we may ask the customer a question and they're trying to figure it out and we jump in and we totally then never get the answer that we we're really looking for because yeah, we're yeah. thinking about it right so let me ask you a question uh, r- regarding this so this was called the one word story card right one word at a time yeah one word story okay. yes so then, um, it, so when you're doing, let's say, leadership development training, and let's say you're talking about communication uh, um, uh, on this card, are there some prompts of what what's a um, a topic to kind of like start with to get people um, thinking about things that are you know back in the office and and how we can yeah use them? the de- the deck has uh, one two three four cards beforehand that go into some of the questions that you can ask. Uh, they're, they're, they're generally uh, uh, almost universal questions. what do you think, feel, or do? How did your experience change? Um, what did you notice? And just asking those open-ended questions, you see, Cedric, from our uh, uh, discussion that people go to what um, is relevant to them. When I do sales training, your point, um, wh- one of the things that comes out of this game as well as some others is a lot of salespeople go into their call thinking they know what the story is Mm -hmm. between them and the client. So they they push their their story. It may be their solution. Again, I have the solution. If you keep asking these open-ended questions, your client may discover a need or a pain point that they may not even be aware of because they're looking for a fix. Give give me a good program. uh, My accounting is bad. Give me a good program. Okay, I can sell you the program. This works. Here's all the features, but the benefit is about w- whatever it may be. So that's that's some of some of the relevance. But yes, you get the questions, and and I'd be glad to send to send you some more information on all of this. Um, I have it on my LinkedIn. I also have it on the web. Just send me an email. I'll I'll send you more information. Izzy, I had a question pertaining to this game. Mm-hmm. When do you first of all? What's the right number of people that should be involved because I can't see this in a large group activity. 
I can. I'll tell you. Have how. you? Okay. I, I do when I um in terms of groups, I, I let, try to limit it to four or five because after five, people tend to lose the track of of, of the flow. I've done it uh, again. I'm a keynoter uh, often, so I've done it with hundreds, if not a thousand people. You bring a person to the room, and by the way, this is the game. I, I most ninety nine percent of the time, the first game I'll present because it encapsulates all the, the features of improv. Staying in the moment, dealing with what you get rather than what you want or expect, and trusting the process, suspending judgment about whether things are going along good or bad. Um, sort of a hero's journey. We all are on a goal. We're gonna come come across uh, the sirens or the, the, the bumps along the road together. Notice how you helped each other. When, when one or more of us stumble, um, we we recapitulated, we added two words, we reformed it to move on forward. Your essence was keeping the track moving forward. So the answer is you bring a person to the front, you demo demonstrate the game with that person. And then you ask everybody in the room to get into twos or threes and tell the same story. Everybody in the room is telling the same story. You have 90 seconds to tell the story of the magic envelope, ready, go. And you get this energy in the room that's, that's magic. That's how you do it. Hmm. Just, you can always break them into small groups. I'm also noticing that this was actually a really good virtual activity, mm -hmm. um, which you know we're, we're constantly trying to find new ideas to help people come together or have events or you know what have you that might be virtual. Um, and I think that you're commenting about how it's hard to keep track, but we could you could essentially put into the chat or have somebody be responsible for putting into the chat all of the different um, words that people used. So that you one, you could keep track and two, you have a record of what the story was. Yeah, another way I do it with Zoom in order to get an order is to put numbers in front of people's names. So, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. You just rename yourself with that number so you, you, you know what order is in. Or now with Zoom, you can keep the order. You know, you can move, move things around. M most, if not all of the games um, are um, translatable to, to Zoom, um, to, to virtual. Okay, so what's the learning that you want to come or what, what's the learning that comes from it? Depends on the objective. In this case, I wanted you to see that the games themselves spark real conversations depending on the goal of the group that you're training or, or working with. So if it's sales, you direct those questions, you know, uh, listening as a salesperson, um, not driving the story, coming in open to any um, uh, unexpected uh, outcomes uh, with, with teams or with, with, with safety, what's keeping you from stepping into the team? Uh, notice you haven't been talking, uh, you know, uh, participating. Um, I, I I had a game. I, I was, did a program for a, a rowing team, a women's rowing team, and played a different game. And um, it, it was a game where people had to respond um, pretty qu quickly. Uh, they didn't have to. There was no time limit, but people tend to respond quickly. But whenever they responded, their idea had to be accepted. There was no discussion about the brainstorm. So uh, an extrovert said, I hated this game because I'm used to just uh, uh, talking and, and, and working things out. And an introvert said, I love this game because for the first time in my professional career, when I put in a suggestion, no one ran over it. <laughs> you know, um, I felt comfortable. So you will get in the experience from these activities, real emotions and behaviors. And it, now it's uh, sort of up to you to knowing what the objective is to point those questions. The questions so are it could be teaming, leadership, communication. You talked about stress relief earlier. Wellness, yeah. Uh, um, interpersonal, wellness. how we relate to each other. My next program next week is uh, called um, Staying Balanced in an Unbalanced World. <laughs> it's about how to, to keep, uh, how to uh, let go of all this, this, um, this stuff that you, you, you don't expect. How do you take care of yourself? And, and the key here is to recognize how you respond to these games. As Susan said, she recognized that her uh, controlling, her competitiveness uh, was impacting the way she was feeling here in a game that has no real world consequence. 
Hold on, so I didn't say. Yeah, you said competitive. <laughs> I think you said competitive. Other, we, I think we only have like five minutes left. So other questions um, while we have you in, and those who need to leave then can. Others are, are welcome to to stay and talk amongst ourselves. Also, yeah, on LinkedIn, if you send me a question, if we hook up on LinkedIn, send me a question. I'll be happy to answer it as many as you want. Yeah, so I have a question, a sort of like um, a net. So I'm, I'm a D style on a, this this scale. I'm a high D. I'm just say that. So I'm trying to connect with. Um, I, I like the game that we played, but I'm also trying to understand if I'm working with a group around, uh, um, l- let's say, um, uh, emotional intelligence or executive presence, right? How then will this activity help me what would i do to for this one word thing to relate it to that topic i think that's what annette's trying to get at as well yeah 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 perfect question let me let me ask you cedric um you said you're a d type in, in in the disc what did you get out of this in terms of what do you see that you might be willing to um recognize that you might not have recognized or change well what i what i saw of it um i i like the um the uh, engagement piece that mm-hmm. everybody had to say something and it kept going along but what i was thinking the whole time is so what can i how can i start a sentence or a statement during my training session that's what i kept thinking to relate it to my training session okay that that what I would suggest is not to worry about relating it to your training. Okay. That's why I just picked up a, a bottle. And, and the game itself does not matter. The way people put themselves into the game, mind, body, heart, and soul is what matters. And that's where the questions are. So where, what did the cards come into play? That's where I'm... The cards are, 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 are different games. So you, Oh, I see. So what, what I would suggest is once you get the cards, play the games. Play them with your friends, your family. Play them at dinner parties. Play them in the car. Izzy, can you it's, give an example of another game? Just yeah. Um, there's a game here called World's Worst. And the idea is in teams of three to five, bring a team up front, have them face the rest of the group and say, these folks are here to demonstrate the worst behavior of what the audience will call out. So each one will do something. So you ask them, what's who are these po- folks? And and some you'll get something like um, um brain surgeons, okay. Um Number one, step forward and give us an example of the world's worst brain surgeon. And they step forward and go, um, where's the brain now? You know, go back and part two does it in three and four. And then I use this game to say, okay, when you're doing best practices or when you're trying to figure out what the rules are going to be, once you start with the worst of something, then you can develop and you have some fun. The group bonds to it. And then they could say, okay, what's 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 what would be the best brain surgeon? Um, and the discussion then becomes uh, traits and tactics. So that's an example of how to use that. Well, and on and, the cards, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Susan. I, something that Cedric said because I was like him. I was thinking how I would apply it, and and the the activity that we just did. I saw immediately because I have a lot of, I just did this exercise a couple of weeks ago when we had a leadership team and I asked anybody to step forward who was an extrovert and the ones who didn't to be an introvert because we were doing diversity and inclusion and we were showing that people are not always going to speak up because we have the same people speak up at all these things and we have the same people that stay quiet. So I did an activity that included all of them and they loved it, but the, the introverts aren't going to say, they're not going to come up and everything, but the, the, the learning I see applicable to this would definitely be that everybody has a voice. Everybody has a voice. Yeah. That you were going to say something else. No, no. I just love that. I, I did like that. I just, what I wasn't sure that the, when you were talking about the cards, I didn't know if that was all related to one game or it was no, just examples no, of a bunch 20, of games. There's 20 some odd games here. Okay. Uh, uh, both physical and, and, um, uh, and just and, and verbal. Um, I, I would and also say that I always promise, uh, Susan, there's just one more sentence uh, that's important. I always say at the beginning of every program, no one is going to be forced to participate. If you don't want to participate, you don't have to. All I ask is you monitor your self-talk. 
And one of the reasons I get people in twos and threes is then just about everybody participates. Mm. Being uh, setting the space you don't have to play really, really makes people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask on each card where you describe the game, do you also have um, examples of like how you might apply it and use it, what lessons it draws out? Or is that yeah, more? Yeah, so at, at, at one word at a time at the end, it says have teams play for about 90 seconds, talk with players about what it's like to participate if they felt successful, if anyone tried to control the story, if it was fun, and whether they gained any insights into their own behavior or emotions. Great. Gotcha. I mean, the, the questions parts are your, 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 um, your, your strength. Um, and some of them ha have variations also. Uh, after, and there's, there's a game called Count to Ten, which you may have known as, as Zen numbers, where people get together in a group without looking, at, they have to count to 10. And every time somebody mentions two, two numbers at the same time, you have to start over. And it's, <laughs> um, Right. Afterward, talk about how individuals figured out when to speak or not, what factors led to success, which factors led to failure, what this says about teams and how they function. I mean, so most of the games, if not all of them, have suggestions. And then at the beginning, there is the broad general questions. Start, stop, and continue. Based on your experience, what are you going to start doing that you recognize would be helpful? Based on your experience, what are you going to stop doing that you realize may be getting in your way sometimes? Okay. And what are you going to continue to do? Because you recognize, oh, you know, that's working. So that's that's a general thing to do at the end of a, a session. All right. Well, two things you said that that helped my D style. Uh, one was uh, <laughs> the start, stop, I'll continue, uh, which is perfect for me because then I, I could see it then. Um, and then you said, don't worry about connecting the game itself to the topic I'm teaching, because that's where I was trying to connect that. So I, I love that. Thank it's you. It's really just about being open to and, and, and brave enough to recognize the experience is really where the answer lies. Perfect. And, and that's why I say play the games, because you're going to you, you, you're going to be vulnerable also. You know, I've had people uh, say to me, uh, CEOs, let me know what games you're going to play so I can prepare myself. And I'm thinking that's that's why the, you, you, you don't have a strong culture because you're trying to protect yourself and you're hanging all your people out to, <laughs> out, out to take the risk. It's not their communication problem. Um, so play the games and then begin to see yourself where your vulnerabilities are. Can I just, hi, hi. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hi. I'm Devon, how are you? I'm sitting here listening. And when I got on, um, Izzy, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, former special education teacher, born and raised in New York, but I'm here in Northern Virginia, so I understand. And I think um, just listening to this um, activity it was like, okay, I get it. And as you, you and I probably uh, don't know the people background, as a formal as a former educator and then sped, you're dealing with children, which I would say we're big adults. Um, big children that learn differently, right? Where we say introvert and extrovert. Mm -hmm. And listening to Cedric, you said you were D. Well, I'm a high DI for sure on this, right? What depends mm -hmm. which um, brand. I'm a D, shows up no matter what. Um, and dealing with, and I believe, Antoinette. Annette? Annette. Annette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when we talk about dealing with introverts, I, I just know when I deal with um, individuals and I, when I was educated, telling educators and also training and coaching folks is, hey, give everybody an opportunity, right? And how you do that. And I think when we are high Ds or extroverts, you want people to hurry up. And I have this model or this saying, everyone has a gift. They open up at different times and to tell leaders and those in um, in charge, like, hey, everybody process things differently. You're stating that someone on, on, on your team is not do, doing certain things, so you don't have to tap into their psyche. Um, and with this game, it sounds great, right? Because like you said, when we have, um, you facilitate and stuff, you always have the same people because I'm that person that quickly jump up, like, yeah, I do it, I do it. And consciously as a presenter facilitate, now I have to sit back and say, you know what? give the, the the room or give the group time to do so. And with doing this activity, watching the three of y'all, I was like sitting here laughing with my mic and camera off, 
saying how great this is because again, now you have that individual as that safe spaces, as he stated, like, okay, I could finally speak up and say something and no one is going to say anything and then moving forward. Cause I see this as a great, especially if you have two or three day gig, this is a great opener that everybody like, oh, that's interesting, Susan. I never heard Susan talk that much, you know, yeah. and now, you know, whether it's a team that's already together or a hybrid team to say, oh, okay, I have a voice. This is good. Along with some of the other training warehouse stuff that I have, like, yeah. Yeah. I like this. It, do, do it wanna... seems like you could use it as, you know, to introduce concepts as an energizer in the middle, as a closer, like, it's really versatile, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it also happens. You can play this game again if you're doing a, a, a full day or a two day. And mm -hmm. every time you you never play the same improv game twice. So right. you, even if you do the same story, the same title, mm -hmm. it's going to be different. And then there's an opportunity to say, what's different now than when you did it yesterday? And right. you start beginning. This is where people start beginning to build confidence about being able to speak up and not be perfect. Right. Because it is empathy. Remember, when Annette stepped up, the rest of us had empathy for her because we could put ourselves in her position. Absolutely. I didn't want to volunteer. I'm glad she volunteered. Now I'm concerned about how Izzy treats her or <laughs> or, or how she does because she represents us. Right. So there's a status thing between the trainer and 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 the, the audience that is, is somewhat leveled by you putting yourself in that position. You don't have to participate, just pay attention. And whatever you say is okay, I can deal with it, even if I'm wrong, even if I make a mistake, own it and move on. That really builds confidence. And also I look at it as, you know, which I need to start working out, but um, <laughs> prior to working out that warm up, right? You have to warm up so that you don't become injured. It sounds a little crazy, but that's the metaphor I was going through in my head and thinking about what Cedric was like, well, how do I tie it in? And I think all too often, and Cedric, I'm not picking on you, but all too often we want to see the value. Well, how do we, how does this tie into our, you know? That's sort the of question, Joanna, exactly. How is this tied in? And I, one of the things I noticed is we helped each other. And mm -hmm. so the two words are one where nobody's going, ah, that's wrong. You're out of here. They go, okay, let's reframe it. I'm going to do it because we have a goal. The goal is to tell the story. What's more important, having one word on it every time or helping each other come along to tell the story? And how can we bring that attitude into the real world? Because the problems are, do have real world consequences and we're yeah. dealing with it. So helping each other builds um, uh, team efficacy. Yeah, yeah. I love this. And I'm certified to do Lego training because I, as a sped teacher, my kids was very interesting, but when it came down to Legos, they loved it, right? And then when yeah, people came into yeah, my classroom, yeah. the adults, they loved it. And I was like, oh, let me do this for adults. Because again, that's the opportunity to have the introvert to finally speak up, you know? It's yeah. all about making it fun, right? About and engaging and participatory. I hope this and, has been fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I want to thank everyone for participating, for um, helping us. Anytime you get a group of trainers together, I feel like you always have this these great rich conversations. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And I Maybe thank you, Izzy, for leading us. <laughs>